Hello, I'm back for the JPA tutorial showing the code. So we have been looking at the, how to define the entities. So basically look there, we have these domain entities. I've uh, just showing how defined. So basically how do you map between the entities in the, the database tables or the columns of things are created. Okay, and what are some of the policies that you use um, in terms of uh, loading the information for the database and propagating ac actions. Now I'm going to focus on something different. I'm going to focus in on this part that is the repository. So uh, why do you need to, to look at the repository? The, the repository interface, why is, is this relevant? Well, the, the, the point is, is the following. You have seen that with JPA, when I have an object in memory, if I just use plain Java to access uh, another object that is referred from these, either through a collection or through a direct reference, if the object is not in memory, GPA just load it to memory. Okay? So it's good. But what happens sometimes is that well, not sometimes. You need to load at least the first object. So you have no pointer at, at the beginning. You have no entity in memory at the beginning. So you need to load the first one. And then you need to have a repository interface where you do a query to get the object from. Then from this object, you can just assess the other objects going through the accesses, going through the pointers, right? The references. Sometimes this is not good because it, 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 there is no good performance. So we define a strategy about how to do this in the, in the next tutorial that's going to be about the service. But now I'm going to focus on the repository to see how do I query objects in the database and, and get them to memory. Okay? So what happens? Let's pick this image, for instance. What happens is that, look, for each object, entity object, automatically automatically Spring creates a remote interface. Okay? These remote, or a repository, sorry, a repository interface that extends JPA repository interface. If you see this, we'll see that by default you get some type of operations to access the database. So by default you get a find all, okay? different types of find all, uh, find by ID. So you get several, okay? So these are, are enough to start, but you can create more. That's what I'm gonna show you is how to create more, okay? So basically, what you, you have here, so in this case, I haven't created more, but look at the question. In, in the question, we have created a few methods here and then I have here the query, and when I have the plain, the plain, uh, the, the, the plain Java uh, SQL query. Okay? The only thing you need to see here, look, select from questions where course, course ID equal to, and then I have these to represent the parameters that I have here. And so you, you can have plain. Um, SQL query there. Now, and then we, uh, I told you about follow some practices that are common to all the team. The strategy we have, and I will explain next, is that in the services you do a query to get some objects and then you do, you, you do the references in memory. So that you start having a more object-oriented like style of programming. Because you may just decide to, well, basically I'm gonna use this interface and I do everything with this interface. So when I start something, I do a very complex query, I get all the objects I want. But then the code, the code is gonna hard to maintain because all these queries can be very difficult to understand and very error prone, okay? Now I'm gonna show you something. So we have seen these, these queries are, are, are simple, but you can do joins. Where, where I've done joins? I think that I have done joins in the course. Okay, so let's see. I have the course execution repository. If, let's see if I have a join here, no. But I have, let's, 
in the course repository, not here, neither here. Okay, let's look. So I'm going to show you an example where I have a, a join. So what I'm going to have here, so this is the quiz answer repository, and I want to find all the quiz answers that are ready to close, okay? That can be closed. Basically, uh, to do this, what I'm going to do, so I select from quiz answers, but I do a join with quizzes, because I need, so look this part, I do a join with quizzes, and then here I do the join with IDs, and then I, I'm going to use the quiz because I, I need to see the conclusion date of the quiz. So it's a bit more complex, but I would tell you that, okay, I've done this for performance because I get all the data I need, but try to be, try not to write very complex stuff here. And if you have perf performance problems, maybe then you can uh, um, decide not to have uh, so much object-oriented code and have more uh, declarative code. And, but just for the problems, and I will tell you, I'll, I'll do profile your code such in order to identify what, where are the performance bottlenecks, okay? So, but I think this is enough. Oh, something, let's see, who, who uses this? So something that you can see to use in IntelliJ. I can just go here and say, find usages. This is very, very useful, okay? And IntelliJ is gonna show me all the code that invokes this method. So when you are reading code, this is really helpful. And we'll see that actually is in this service. So at the beginning of the service, I just find and then I work with them. I do some statistics with the, the quiz answers that uh, are not closed yet, but that can be closed and do the statistics. And I do it because of performance, which I can explain in another video. Okay, see you for the next video on the service side, okay?